Now today, I've got the high honor to present Wildlife Forever's first ever Distinguished Service Award. This person receiving this recognition has distinguished himself and excelled through service and accomplishments, supporting America's conservation efforts. His personal stewardship in developing new partnerships, opening doors, and achieving high results is simply outstanding. Let me tell you about our awardee. He's a quiet, soft-spoken individual that shies away from the limelight. I'm supposed to do that. <laughs> he is always busy, always on the move, always helping out with sweat equity, sound advice, and proven leadership with one goal in mind, get it done. This individual has gone beyond the call of duty. I've seen him in action distributing 15,000 free trees to the public at Mall of America during the State Fish Art Expos. Attended at his own expense and time public fishing tournaments manning the Stop Aquatic Hitchhiker booth. He pioneered partnerships with the National Professional Anglers Association for AIS education and outreach. He's appeared on versus television catching giant smallmouth bass. Well, maybe that was more fun. Uh, but he developed and filmed tip segments for angling uh, clubs on stopping aquatic hitchhikers. He's provided funding for fishing gear and t-shirts for kids at outdoor events, and perhaps most important, he's guided wildlife forever down the path of invasive species education to anglers, boaters, and hunters. And this all started with the U.S. Forest Service and our best ambassador for the threat campaign, the fish and aquatic ecology program leader for the eastern region, a true light in conservation, Dr. Nick Small. Nick, will you come up here and accept the 2011 right about short on words. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank Doug uh, and the staff at Wildlife Forever for this uh, incredible honor and the board of directors. Um, this is very humbling for me, especially when you're in a job that you really have a passion for. And I started thinking about this distinguished service. What does it really mean? Well, being in the Forest Service, and I think September 27th, it'll be 32 years as a public servant, uh, serving the public. So I kind of understand that, but then I was trying to think, what does distinguished really mean? And I thought back through my career uh, that started with the Forest Service in the state of Oregon, working with people like uh, Jim Martin uh, out in the field, steelhead fishing. Uh, Jack Donaldson was a director at that time. And then as I moved to Wyoming, working with people like John Boffman, Mike Stone, and then heading to the Southwest and working with uh, a retired uh, director of New Mexico, Jack Kelly, and then Larry Riley and his staff. And then moving to Wisconsin and working with Mike Staggs and the folks. It's just distinguished means to me, it's not about me as an individual, but it's about my agency and the partners, as Doug mentioned, and the real strong relationships that you build over your career that help keep that light going for the passion that you have for the resource. And uh, I have to say that uh, the Forest Service has been really good to me. I think about all the support I get from our national headquarters through Ann Zimmerman and her staff. Um, I guess I've gone through three regional foresters in Milwaukee now, so I've uh, survived that gauntlet. But uh, working with the uh, aquatic use and species panels for the Mississippi River Basin and the Great Lakes Basin panels and having folks like uh, Mike Hoff and Greg Conover and others, I mean, you couldn't ask for a better group of people to be working with. So really, I think this is a, a reflection of the people that I've uh, been exposed to and worked with over my career. But I have to say there's one person who's really kept this all together for me, and that's my wife Patricia of 32 years of marriage. She's been a wonderful 
person. She's been kind of a trailing spouse a lot, but she's really kept us together. So again, Doug, thank you, staff at Wildlife Forever, and uh, the board of directors. This is quite, uh, quite an honor. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. He's a true light in our community. Now we have just a few minutes left, uh, and before we go, I'd like to share with you a short story. A week ago today, I walked to the pasture north of our house to do a little walkabout. And the green was really thick and tall, and as I walked the old logging road north, the fallen oak trees from last year's deer season's heavy snow still blocked the trail. And I took my time and broke a few limbs and paused to look and listen. We live with bears. Around the fallen trees and bases, I saw fresh digging bears. And I remember making some noise just to ensure that my presence was known. It was really thick in the woods this year thick and bears. Well, I walked to our newly planted food plot back in the pasture and it was coming up green. Thank goodness for our late summer rains that we have in Minnesota. And I took a photo with my iPhone to note the progress. And it was then that I heard it. <clears throat> I stopped cold in my tracks. And only 50 yards away at the center of the open field, just inside the woods, came a ground. But was it really a ground? Maybe it was a chainsaw off somewhere in the distance. And then it happened again. No mistake this time. The hair on the back of my neck stood straight up. My breathing became quick, and I wanted to bolt. But no. This was my land. And I hollered out, hey! <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> but that should teach it. <laughs> Came back this low and determined reply. So, I left. <laughs> now, I didn't run. I backed away and the chill ran up and down my spine. And I gotta admit, it was scary. Now, could it have been a dog? Not likely. One, we don't see any loose dogs, and two, <coughs> dogs usually bark. No, I think it was a bear, a big black bear, holding his ground, unafraid. <coughs> On August 31st, that's not long ago, we'd seen a big 350-pound-plus uh, bear on our trail camera right at the house. My neighbor had allowed some hunter to bait the joining uh, our property line. And a hunter had used piles of stale bread and donuts and grease and syrup from the hamburger joints uh, to bait. And the low growl was a warning, stay away. Well, I never went back that day. My wife and the bear, they were correct, stay away. And that's living with wildlife in North Branch, Minnesota. And my moment in the wild was a ray of brilliant light on an ordinary day. It will be remembered. And you too have those rare times in the wild that recharge and renew us in our quest to conserve America's fish and wildlife. We just need to take notice of those rare moments in our busy lives. 2011 has been full of challenges. It's been a difficult year in the conservation community. Often when we endure long hours of worry, frustration over budgets, serious concern over resources, we often miss the point of our mission. We fail to see the sparks of light that make it all worthwhile. And so often it's just outside, outdoors, if we look for and notice it. You see, we have sparks of light around us all the time, just like the night sky. Glimmers of hope that thrill our senses, if only we look for them. 
My wish to you today is to see the rays of light. Surround yourself with people like Nick Schmall. They will enrich your life and help you along the journey. Take time to get outdoors and even just in your own backyard. Who knows, maybe a bear will awaken and recharge your spirit. The power of the wild, it's amazing. I want to thank you for coming today. Let's do something big together. It's been a true delight. Have a great conference and safe travels. Thank you all. Chills on my arm thinking of that crowd. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>